Ya Mustafa the chosen one sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Ya Mustafa the chosen one sallallahu alayhi wa sallam الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Respected viewers of Madhuri Channel We once again welcome you in our program Al-Mustafa the Chosen One Insha'Allah Azza wa Jal today we'll be talking about the soul of our life the love of Mustafa Kareem عليه الصلاة والسلام soul of our life when I say the soul of Iman faith Alhamdulillah that is the love of Mustafa Sallallahu Ta'ala Alayhi Wa Alayhi Wa Sallam respecting viewers today we'll be talking about this topic be with us from start to end Insha'Allah Azza wa Jal we'll be learning a lot but before we proceed towards our topic let's make few good intentions because my Shaykh Tariqat Amir of Ahl Sunnah Hazrat Allama Maulana Muhammad Ilyas Attar Qadri Dawat Barakatumul Aliyah has given us a beautiful mindset uh, following the commandment and teachings of Islam that we should make good intentions before we perform any permissible task or any good deed as I'm going to present this program insha'Allah I make this intention that I'll do it for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in order to attain reward and spread the message of the name Islam and love of Mustafa sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. You're watching, sitting in front of Madani channel's screen. You should make this intention. You will be with us from start till end. You'll remember what you learn, act upon and pass this knowledge on to others too. And as very good intentions as you can add, the higher the reward inshallah you can attain. As I earlier said, today we'll be talking about love of Mustafa Kareem alayhi salatu was salam, insha'Allah azza wa jal. That is the essence of our iman, our faith. That is the soul of our faith. Without having the love of Mustafa Kareem alayhi salatu was salam, uh, the iman is incomplete. But there cannot be an iman where there is no love of Mustafa sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa barik wa sallam. We have got our brother Wasim Abbas Muballigh of Dawat Islam insha'Allah with us and let's go towards him and we'll talk on this topic. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Wasim how are you doing? Alhamdulillah. I'm good. Alhamdulillah. Today's topic is about love of Mustafa sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam which is the soul of our faith, our iman and without that our iman cannot be completed. Uh, I would say that uh, we will be talking about various dimensions of loving uh, Mustafa Kareem alayhi salatu was salam, how essential, how important it is uh, and what is the difference of uh, majazi ishq and haqiqi ishq, right? Uh, what is the reality of real ishq uh, love of Mustafa sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam and loving of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his beloved Rasul alayhi salatu wa salam. But first of all, what are the teachings of Islam and what does Quran guide us in this regard? Loving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and loving Mustafa Kareem alayhi salatu wa salam. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. First of all, Rizwan, the topic, mashallah, that you've uh, touched upon today regarding faith and regarding the love of the Prophet If you think about it, we're talking about two most fundamental aspects of a Muslim's life, no which doubt. is the faith and the love of the Prophet And you've beautifully coincided both these um, uh, elements together, where we come to know that faith is the most important asset, the most precious asset that a woman possesses, a believer no possesses. Um, successful will be only the one who departs this world with his faith. No so now we understand that faith is the most important thing. Without faith, um, any worship that we perform is useless. So we've understood that faith is the most important thing. Now, what is the soul of the faith? Subhan. The most important thing for the faith, after believing in Allah well, subhanahu no wa ta'ala, there is no life. Indeed. After believing in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, after loving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is the love of the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. And when we talk about uh, loving the Prophet alayhi salatu wa sallam, we need to understand that the term you referred to earlier on, haqiqi ishq, the actual, the true love, as when we define it further, which I'm sure you will inshallah in a minute um, do so, 
when we define it further, uh, when it comes to the love of this world, the the forbidden love that we refer to, what is that and what is this true love? And what does it lead to and what does that love lead to? So that would be very interesting for the viewers of Madani Channel to know uh, about this, but how important it is for us to love the Prophet and um, how does it serve as the soul of our faith? Uh, a glimpse of this can be seen from verse number 69 of Surah Nisa. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he has mentioned that and whomsoever obeys Allah, and his messenger will be with those upon whom Allah has bestowed grace. So whomsoever obeys Allah and his messenger will be with those upon whom Allah Almighty has bestowed grace. The prophets, the exceedingly truthful and the martyrs and the righteous and how excellent these companions are. So this is the persuasion that has been given to us in the Holy Quran where we've been persuaded, we've been encouraged to love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to love the beloved Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam and then we've been told that how fortunate they will be, that they will be amongst the Prophets, the Siddiqeen. Their companionship would be with them. Indeed. They will be together with the Prophets, with Indeed. Siddiqeen, with and, Shuhada. And in the, in the commentary of this verse, it is stated that the contextual background, the cause of revelation of this verse was that Sayyidina Thoban radiallahu anh, he was amongst those Sahaba, well, every Sahabi, every companion Allah, he loved the Prophet والسلام, immensely. No doubt. But Sayyidina Thuban Allah, one of his distinguished attributes was that he loved the Prophet والسلام, immensely to the highest level. He was known for it, Sayyidina Thuban Allah. So, um, what happened was that he radiallahu no, couldn't bear separation from the Prophet Allah. Allah. It was, it, he, he just could not take um, being separated from the Prophet ﷺ. So one day, um, he was uh, so saddened and um, in such a sorrowful state that the, the complexion of his face changed. And um, uh, seeing this, the Holy Prophet ﷺ, he asked him that, why has your face color changed? What, what happened to you? Why has your right. complexion changed? To which he replied that, I'm not ill and I do not have any pain either. Uh, the only thing is that when you are not in front of me, when the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is not in front of me, then I get extremely anxious and extremely um, terrified. And he says that when I remember the hereafter, then I fear that how would I behold you over there? Allah. Now look at Sayyidina Thuban radiallahu ta'ala. He is talking to his master sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He is visualizing the hereafter. He is saying that when I think about the hereafter, I, I get this fear that how am I going to behold you over there? You know, even the, 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 the desire of a companion like Sayyidina Thuban radiallahu ta'ala in the hereafter is to behold the Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam. So he carries on to say that how will I behold you in the hereafter? You will be in the highest of the ranks and um, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even grants me paradise in the hereafter then how would I reach you Allah. that you will be in the highest of the ranks and even if Allah gives me paradise how would I reach you this is true love isn't it indeed so when he radiallahu ta'ala was explaining um, these feelings of his to the Prophet والسلام, that's when this verse was revealed Subhanallah. That's when this ayah was revealed and he was um, given this satisfaction. His heart was given this, um, was solace through this that um, no matter how many um, uh, difference of stages there may be between two people, but the uh, obedience, those who obey the Prophet والسلام, they will get the honor, the reward of having the companionship, the neighborhood of the Holy Prophet والسلام, in the hereafter. And the sincere, those who are obedient to the Prophet والسلام, they will not be deprived of beholding the Prophet والسلام, in paradise and from his um, companionship. And in another hadith, it has been mentioned that a person will be with, uh, a person will be with, uh, with him whom he loves. This is what I wanted to uh, pick upon. Subhanallah. Beautifully, Wasim Abbasma, you have touched upon a beautiful ayah of Quran and you've explained that if those, they love Allah, 
they love Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and they do their ittiba, they follow, then inshallah what a beautiful abode, what a great companionship they will have in the hereafter. One distinguished, uh, distinguished fact uh, and the fact of what we understand from this that this was the mindset of Sahaba Ikram Ali Muridwan subhanallah, they did not love Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam alone in this dunya, but they, their love was such, uh, they was, their love was so true to the extent that they were also worried and concerned about the hereafter. How would they behold? How would they have the vision of Mustafa, their beloved, in the hereafter? Everlasting abode, how will they behold? And they were concerned and worried that if our status would not be uh, to that high status where Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would reside in Jannah, how would we, we be able to behold? So this was, this was the concern of Sahaba Ikram Ali Muridwan. Likewise, there is a hadith which you touched upon the end part of that hadith is, subhanAllah Allah is Sahabi Rasul uh, Radiallahu Ta'ala and comes in the court of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam and he says Ya Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when will the day of judgment establish? He was asking about the time. Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam said what preparations have you done for that day? Allahu Akbar. Now what was the answer of that Sahabi Rasul the companion of Prophet uh, Radiallahu Ta'ala an. He said uh, I do not have any fast or uh, salah or or you see, although these Sahaba Ikram and Ridwan used to fast, they used to observe uh, fast and they, they would offer salah, subhanAllah. They had all those means, but they did not rely upon their good deeds. They did not rely upon their uh, salah, upon their fast, upon their song and salah. Allah Akbar. But what did he rely upon? SubhanAllah. He said, but the thing what I have and I possess is the love of Allah and His Messenger. Sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Our respective viewers of Padani channel, do you know when Sahabi Rasul said this that I have, I possess love of Allah and His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam What was the reply of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as mentioned by Mubalik of Dawat Islami Then Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam said the one who he loves the, the one in this dunya will be with him in the hereafter too Then Sahaba Kiram say that we after embracing Islam and coming into the fold of Deen, Allahu Akbar, embracing the faith of Islam, we did not feel the, the oh, moment of yeah. happiness before. Then that moment in time when we were given this glad tiding that the person who he loves in this dunya, the one, he will be with him on the day of judgment. That's the reason they were happy because they loved Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallama more than their life, more than their children, more than their families more than their parents each and everything in this dunya they loved Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and this glad tiding meant that they would have that rafaqat they would have that companionship of Mustafa Karim alayhi salatu was salam in Jannah so this was the true love of Mustafa sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa barik wa sallim Subhanallah. So, indeed, um, and when we read the seerah of uh, various other companions, Ali Muridwan, we come to know that they understood what faith is. Subhanallah. And they understood what the soul of faith and is. And what is the complete faith? The complete faith. Allah. There's another um, account where Sayyidina Rabi'ah Rabia bin Kaab Aslami Allah. Allah. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. He uh, states that I used to stay in the service of the Prophet والسلام, the whole night. What a fortune he had. Subhanallah. Allah. And uh, he says that I would bring water for wudu for him Suhan. and I would also um, serve him in other ways as well so one day the Holy Prophet he asked me sell Allah, ask, ask whatever you want and Allah. what did he ask for Subhanallah. did he ask for uh, bank balances did he ask for properties did he ask for gold and silver he, what he asked for was that I ask for your companionship in the paradise Allah. I ask for your companionship in paradise this is what Sayyiduna Rabi'a bin Ka'b Aslami radiallahu ta'ala he says that I asked for and the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam he said that anything else apart from this Allah and he says that this is all what my desire is this is all what my purpose is to which he alayhi salatu wasalam replied then um, help me in this matter through performing sujood 
Subhan. So again, um, we come to know over here that the sole desire of the Sahaba Ridwan, is not only to enter paradise, but to attain the companionship, the neighborhood of the Prophet والسلام, even in paradise. And another thing over here, we uh, come to know that the Prophet والسلام, he is asking himself, Sal, ask. Now, of course, the Prophet والسلام, will ask. Why? Because he's been given the authority by Allah Subhan. subhanahu wa ta'ala to bestow anything to anyone of this world or of the hereafter. When he alayhi salatu salam said, Sal, ask. He didn't say that only ask for the bounties of this world. Don't ask me anything from the hereafter. Or he alayhi salatu salam didn't say that only ask me for the bounties of the hereafter, not of this world. It was open, um, yes. open question. Subhan. Ask. So this also highlights the fact that the Holy Prophet والسلام, has been given the authority, the power by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bestow whatever blessing he wants to. This was the aqeedah of Sahabi Rasul that if even I ask Jannah, then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam is Malik, he is uh, the owner of Jannah and, and he can grant me Jannah. And also look at the desire of the Allah Sahabi Allah. of uh, Prophet والسلام, that he asked for the companionship of the Prophet in paradise. Because this if companionship the is there, the paradise is there as well. Allah. Look at their intellect and the, the, those companions were those. You see, it is one way we say that ilm, knowledge, it opens the doors of wisdom. Then sure. Imagine the wisdom and intellect of those companions who acquired knowledge directly from the Prophet They knew what to ask from the Prophet and made life a lot easier for us through these questions. If anyone, any person of authority today asks us what do we want, it would be perhaps, you know, um, uh, wipe off all my debts or it would perhaps, you know, I want these many But this tells that how much... Uh, what are our priorities? Indeed. How much love do we possess for what thing? You see, isn't it? This is something it is. If you love something, you would wish that to, to have, isn't it? Indeed. But this tells us the topic of our day. This was the uh, soul of their faith was the love of Mustafa alayhi salatu wasalam. And through each and every act they would do, it would reflect from Indeed. that. Whether it was their actions, whether it was their sayings, whether it was any other, uh, you know, um, act that they performed through everything, the love of the Prophet ﷺ would be reflected. We will now, come back to this topic, inshallah. Wasim, by, uh, inshallah, there is a time for a segment, inshallah. Respect viewers, now we will include one segment that is chosen, a sunnah. We'll come back, inshallah. We'll continue from where we stopped. Sallu ala al-habib, sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ya Mustafa, the chosen one, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ya Mustafa, the chosen one. Respected viewers of Madani Channel, today uh, we've got this beautiful hadith. He, sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, would walk quickly, leaning forward slightly, as though he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is walking downhill. The hadith is, Sayyidina Abu Huraira, radiyallahu ta'ala, and has narrated, he, sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, would walk so fast as if the earth is being rolled beneath his blessed feet. We would get out of breath while walking with him, meaning with Rasulullah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, but he, sallallahu ta'ala alayhi would keep on walking quickly and effortlessly. So this was the work of Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallama subhanallah respective viewers of Madhani channel even sahaba ikram they could not match the, with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallama's work. Now who else can match with the personality of Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallama. Uh, respective viewers of Malik Shalim, today we are talking about soul of our faith, that is love of Mustafa Kareem alayhi salatu wa salam. Ji, you wanted to mention one point uh, before going to segment. Ji, carry on please. Um, I was just highlighting the fact regarding uh, love, that now we're talking about the love of the Prophet alayhi salatu wa and love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but at the same time in where you started this discussion from regarding Ishqi Majazi, that when we talk about love, then we need to ensure that our love is directed in the right direction. It is in loving the Prophet والسلام, in loving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the other love, which unfortunately is the unlawful love, which we all understand what we are referring to over here. When a person indulges in that, then what happens? It leads you to the path of hell to the path of fire but when our love is directed in the right direction which is loving the prophet alayhi salatu loving allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then that leads us towards 
paradise that leads us towards obedience of the Prophet that leads us towards uh, the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Prophet is something that makes us determined in front of the biggest of the challenges, in front of the biggest of the trials, in front of the biggest of the hardships that we can ever face. It is this love that made Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salatu wa salam um, uh, challenge um, a king like uh, Namrud. It was this love and obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the rightly directed love that made uh, Ibrahim alayhi salam happily go into fire. So we need to understand that when we have this element of love, it is directed in the right direction, which is loving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam, that serves as the foundational grounds for every other attribute and every other pious deed that will then actually lead us towards that. Absolutely right, Wasim Abbas Bay, the very interesting fact you have brought into discussion. Nowadays, love of boyfriend and girlfriend, uh, I think you were referring to, uh, which is not allowed uh, in Islam you know, before marriage. Uh, absolutely right. Now, respect views of Madani Channel, there is one word which is very common in this uh, context. You see, there are certain places in maybe in back home, so, some people would have read this, or maybe those they are aware of the Urdu language, they could have heard this word, Sanam Bewafa, right? It is written. And this is referred to the beloved being, uh, you see, disloyal. Uh, disloyal, and he or she has, or he has betrayed uh, the lover. So this is the concept of love. In this dunya, if we love somebody, he can betray you or she can betray you. But Allahu Akbar, if you are talking about love of Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallama, Allahu Wani, subhanallah, uh, it is such a great love, loving the beloved like Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallama, there is no disloyalty uh, whatsoever involved there. And Allahu Akbar, the uh, the, the Zat of Mustafa Karim alayhi salatu was salam is such that even he will be helpful, he will do wafa on the day of judgment when we be in need. Okay, why should we love such people who could betray us? Why should we love such people who are disloyal? We should love Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallama who prayed for us when we were not even born. We should love Rasulullah alayhi salatu wa salam. Allahu Akbar, when he was born, his lips were moving and he remembered the ummah. We should love Rasulullah alayhi salatu wa salam throughout his life he prayed for the ummah, for you, for me, for the believers. We should love Rasulullah alayhi salatu wa salam even he did departed from this mortal world at that moment in time he was remembering the ummah we should love that that prophet alayhi salatu was salam inshallah azawajal he will help us in our grave inshallah azawajal inshallah we should love that rasul we should have that beloved who will do wafa with us inshallah azawajal on the day of judgment and when nobody will be there to help us who will help us? That would be the Zat of Mustafa Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam. So that should be the center of our focus and love of uh, the tr the essence of our faith and soul of our Iman. What is that respective views of Madani Shal? Jaan hai ishke Mustafa. Rose fuzun kare khuda. Allah says, Jaan hai ishke Mustafa. Rose fuzun kare khuda. Jisko ho ishq ka maza. Naze dawa. Uthai kyu? Inshallah package will be played we'll be back and continue our topic sallu ala al habib sallallahu ta'ala ala muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ya mustafa the chosen one sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ya mustafa the chosen one today we see in the society that people are after dignity we should be respected and acclaimed in the society so what do you think that what things shall a person protect himself from so that he develops his character apparently and internally? He becomes beloved of Allah Almighty as well and he also attains a rank in the sight of people too. Normally, this greed, bad type of greed, this actually leads us to many disadvantages and destructions. The type we are talking about is bad greed. As sometimes greed is also good, like greed of good deeds and greed of goodness. Well, bad type of greed 
Sometimes it dominates our mind and intellect, and it also dominates our right decisions, and we are deceived by it. As we have asked that what are those things we should protect ourselves from, so the first thing which came in my mind was bad type of greed. All sorts of bad greeds must be discouraged. By protecting oneself from greed, this will help us to protect ourselves from fraud and deceiving people. For example, one person wants to sell his house. For the sake of an argument, suppose he got a genuine offer. Now they think, okay, if we've got this offer, well, it should increase now. And they refuse that. No, we don't want to sell in this price. Part of tactics. Even though the buyer had given a reasonable and handsome offer. No, if his offer is this much, then he should increase 10 or 20 thousand pounds. And normally, offers are rejected like this. Now later on, they keep on waiting for good offer. And now whatever offer they receive, that is less than 5, 10, 20 thousand less than the offer which they received initially. Well, then when they sit together, they realize the fact that they were greedy. If only we were not greedy then, if only we had sold it. So, sometimes people get profits like this, but they have greed for more, and they've got this mentality that the price will increase. If I say in reality that, having this mentality, people they have made losses of millions, rather billions, I won't be wrong. Yes, it's a fact. Let me tell you a piece of advice. If you want to protect yourself, then be negligent from what people possess. We indulge ourselves into grief and we keep ourselves burning in pain. One of the basic reasons is that that we would like to change our lifestyle by looking at others and their belongings. The one who burns his own hut by looking at others' palaces gets deprived of his own shelter. So. We should follow the beautiful teachings of Islam that look at someone less fortunate in worldly matters and see someone better than you in terms of Islamic affairs. If only we adopt this beautiful teaching. As long as saying is concerned, I am saying to you and you are also listening. But to develop this attitude in reality, it's not that easy. But the one who is able to achieve this, that means from that very moment in time, Better days of his life are started. Beautifully said, if you want to live, then learn to live. Respected viewers of Madan Nation, we're talking about love of Mustafa Karim alayhi salatu wasalam being a soul of our faith. Uh, Wasim al could you please share any account of Sahaba Ikram alayhi ridwan, subhanallah, which proves that uh, they had this mindset that each and everything, whatever uh, they possess, the most important thing in their life, uh, subhanAllah, is the love of Mustafa alayhi salatu wasalam. Indeed, um, there are many accounts uh, through which we come to know that the best companions, Ali Muridwan, they went to the extreme limits in proving um, and in uh, expressing the love for the Holy Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. And it's not only them um, who actually uh, expressed it, but those who witnessed them through them also we come to know that how uh, much uh, drowned were the holy were the companions in the love of the Prophet the famous account of Sayyidina Urwa bin Mas'ud at the time of the Treaty of Hudaybiyah at that time he had not embraced Islam yet so he came um, as an ambassador from the Quraysh to the Muslims and when he went back to the Quraysh the way he depicted the entire account, what he saw over there, how the Prophet ﷺ was respected by his companions that just you know, uh, refreshes our faith. What he saw over there and it shows us that how the companions ﷺ, they loved the Prophet ﷺ. He says that, I saw that whenever the Prophet ﷺ, he would perform wudu, then the honorable companions ﷺ, they would try their utmost to attain the water of the wudu which the Prophet ﷺ would perform with to the extent that it seemed as if they would fight one another in case of not getting that water. Then he says that I saw that whenever the Holy Prophet ﷺ would uh, pour water in his blessed mouth then and whenever he would rinse his mouth 
the Sahaba Ali Muridwan, they wouldn't let that water fall on the ground. Allah. They would take it in their hands as a and, blessing. As a uh, blessing, and uh, they would rub that water, they would rub it on their faces and on their uh, bodies. This was regarding the blessed saliva of the Prophet والسلام, and he further says whenever the blessed hair of the Prophet والسلام, was separate from his body, then the honorable companions they would rush in getting it, they would hasten in getting their blessed hair. And whenever the Holy Prophet والسلام, he would give any command, he would give any issue, then they would rush into fulfilling it. They would, um, they would be as quick as they could in fulfilling that command. And whenever the Holy Prophet والسلام, would converse, then the Sahaba والسلام, they would listen to him quietly. And uh, none of them would look at the beloved Prophet والسلام, with their eyes raised. None of the companions would look at the Prophet والسلام, with raised gaze. And uh, after stating this, after depicting this entire account, uh, Urwa bin Mas'ud as of now, remember, he had not embraced Islam. He said to the uh, group of the uh, polytheists, he said that, O oh, group of Qu uh, Quraysh, I've been to the uh, I've been to the courts of um, many kings, many kings, many uh, grand kings. I've been to the to the court Steve of Kesar uh, uh, yeah. and Kisra and Najashi. I've been in their gatherings. I've been in their companionships. But I've not seen any of them being respected by their courtiers, by their servants, the way the companions Muhammad. of the Holy Prophet والسلام, they respect Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wa sallam. He carries on to say. That when the Holy Prophet والسلام, when his blessed saliva comes out from his blessed mouth, then the Sahaba والسلام, the, the honorable companions والسلام, they would gather it on their, on, on their hands and they would rub it on their cheeks. And any smallest of the commands that the Prophet والسلام, would issue, then even the elderly companions, those who will be old in their age, they would also rush forward in fulfilling that command. And whenever any of them would talk to the Prophet والسلام, he would lower his voice. And whenever the Holy Prophet والسلام, would converse, um, everyone, all of them would listen to him with utmost respect and reverence and none of them would talk to the Prophet by uh, having eye contact, by looking into his eyes. No one respect. could have his sight uh, fixed upon the blessed face of the Prophet whenever he would profit this. Now he is depicting all this what he saw to the group of Quraysh. He carries on to say that when the Prophet والسلام, would perform wudu or the water, then Sahaba والسلام, they would rush forward and not let that water fall on the ground. Whenever he والسلام, would use um, the comb in his beard, on his, uh, in his, um, uh, uh, on his hair, then the blessed hair, they would, be separ they would get separated from his body. Then those uh, ardent devotees of the Prophet والسلام, the honorable companions Ali Muridwan, they would take that uh, honorable hair as a sacred relic and they would uh, revere it, they would, um, they would respect it and they would preserve it as a sacred relic. And he uh, carried on to say that after this, that um, those Sahaba, uh, I've seen the love and the sacrifice, the passion of sacrifice that they had for one another. And then he carried on to say uh, to his nation that by Allah, I've seen such a group who will not turn away from you and they will dominate you. They will overcome you. Now, this account over here is one way. Sayyidina Urwa bin Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala no, he mentioned it to Quraysh at the time when he had not embraced Islam. And at the end, to conclude the whole discussion, the whole depiction that he saw over there, what did he say? That they will not turn away from you, they will dominate you. Now, the question arises over here, this last very sentence that Urwa bin Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala, which he said over here, that they will dominate you. Was it because he had seen them um, doing, uh, you know, having big weapons? Did he say this because they were uh, doing their war like exercises? A big army. Did he see their, you know, um, uh, war trainings going on? Did they see, you know, them training for the battle or big army or big weapons? What was it? 
It was their love for the Prophet ﷺ that Urwa bin Mas'ud had seen at that point and that's when he had realized that no one can defeat them. Why? Because they have the treasure of all the treasures which is the love of the Prophet ﷺ. Even the non-believers at that time, they had realized this fact that no one can defeat them. They will dominate everyone. Why? Because they have the treasure of all the treasures. He compared this reverence of the Prophet ﷺ with the king uh, the likes of Qaisar al Kisra and Najashi, who were the superpowers of that time. Everyone used to be, uh, everyone used to fear them. But when he said that they will dominate you, it was just because of the love that Sahaba had for the Prophet ﷺ and Masha nothing else. MashaAllah. Beautiful. Respect viewers of uh, We are talking about love of Mustafa والسلام, being the soul of our faith. No doubt it is. We uh, will include one segment in our program, and that is chosen facts. Let's now listen a few facts. Sallu ala al-Habib, sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ya Mustafa, the chosen one, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ya Mustafa, the chosen one. Respecting viewers, the very first question we've got for you is, what is Iman, faith? Now, the answer is, to wholeheartedly accept everything that is from the necessities of a religion. Second question we've got for you is, when is sleeping harmful to the intellect? And the answer is, after Asr. It is narrated in a hadith, whoever sleeps after Asr and loses his intellect, he should blame himself. And the third question today we've got for you is, with how many fingers did the beloved Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam eat? The answer is with three fingers. SubhanAllah. So respectively, uh, two, three beautiful things we learned, the definition of faith and today we're talking about uh, soul of faith is the love of Mustafa alayhi salatu wasalam. And today we also learned about the fact that we should avoid sleeping after Asr because one can uh, lose the uh, intellect and we also learned about the fact that Sunnah of Prophet وسلم, eating with three fingers is one of the beautiful Sunnah of Prophet if only today we can attain this blessing of from this program that we learn this one beautiful Sunnah of Rasul وسلم, that we start eating with three fingers this will definitely increase the love of Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam in our hearts because we are talking about loving Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the soul of our Iman. And you know if there is no soul in body, body becomes a dead body. As long as soul is there, a person is alive. So metaphorically, if there is no soul in one's Iman, that Iman is dead. So if you want to keep your Iman alive, then you should have that soul inside your Iman. And that is the love of Mustafa. Sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. And Allah says, Jaan hai ishq Mustafa. Rose fuzun kare khuda. He prays in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that may this love of Mustafa alayhi salatu wa salam increase every day because this is the soul of my faith. La Iman ali man la muhabbatala. There is no Iman, there is no faith. So respect the viewers of Madani Channel that, that there is no love, there is no faith. So the, the love of Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is one of the most essential ingredients or it is the soul of one's faith you can say. Let's put it this way. So we're talking about loving Rasul sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa barik wa sallam. The Masim Coming back to the accounts of Sahaba Ikram, Ali ibn Ridwan, you see books of a hadith, subhanAllah, history is full with the waqiat, the accounts, the way Sahaba Ikram, Ali ibn Ridwan expressed their love and very brief, mashallah, hadith you mentioned, how, subhanAllah, the love of Sahaba Ikram, it was explained by a Sahabi, a Rasul, later who embraced Islam. Now, 
If we want to know love, we can also ask from Siddiq Akbar radiallahu ta'ala. If we want to learn the love of Mustafa, we can ask from Sayyidina Umar radiallahu and Sayyidina Uthmani Ghani radiallahu and likes of Sayyidina Ali al-Murtaza, karramallahu ta'ala, wajahahu al-kareem, Allahu Akbar. They were ready to sacrifice their lives. And Sahaba Ikram, they gave their lives. They did not love anyone more than Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam even if their father, their, their son, their, their relatives they came in, in front of them and they, they thought that they are the hindrance between love of Mustafa alayhi salatu was salam so respective views of Madani Shayna they preferred loving Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Zad of Mustafa Kareem alayhi salatu was salam any account would you like to mention in this regard? there are many accounts for one way um, as you were uh, you were talking about Sayyidina Siddiq Akbar radiallahu anhu, Sayyidina Farooq Azam radiallahu anhu. I was just thinking that these are the titles. Subhanallah. Siddiq Akbar, Farooq Azam, Uthman Ghani, and Mawla Mushkil Kusha, Ali al Murtaza, Shir e Khuda, Layan of Allah. What was it that made them attain these titles? Subhanallah. What was Subhanallah. it? Love of Mustafa alayhi Love of the Mustafa, love of, uh, Mustafa alayhi salatu was salam. That is something that made Abu Bakr as Siddiq Akbar. That is something which made Umar bin Khattab as Farooq Azam. That is something which made Uthman ibn Affan as Ghani. And uh, that is something which made Ali al-Murtaza as Mushkil Kusha, as Shari Khuda, as Lan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is this love that, 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 that distinguishes a person from ordinary people. Now, as we're talking about the love of the Prophet, والسلام, the accounts through which we come to know how important this is and how Sahaba Akram, Ali Muridwan, they attained such high uh, ranks. Loving the Prophet, والسلام, there is one thing, but the, the, the blessed body parts, the blessed parts of his body, how much they uh, respected and loved those uh, parts um, is something that we need to learn, uh, learn from uh, their seerah that how they loved the Prophet ﷺ. Take the example of the blessed hair of the Prophet ﷺ. How beloved did they keep the hair of the Prophet ﷺ? We come to know that um, um, at Hudaybiyah, the Prophet ﷺ, he trimmed his blessed hair and um, he placed them at a, at a green tree. And the blessed companions Ali Murid, when they rushed forward to uh, grab those uh, blessed hair. And Sayyidatana Ummi Ammara radiallahu says that I also succeeded in gaining some of the hair. And after the uh, apparent passing of the Prophet from, uh, from this world, whenever any ill person would come, what we would do is we would soak those blessed hair in water and make that ill person drink that water and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would grant cure. that ill person cure. This is what Sayyidatuna Ummi Ammara radiallahu ta'ala is telling us that this was with the practice of Sahaba Ali Muridwan regarding the blessed hair of the Prophet Imagine the love Sahaba Ali Muridwan had for the blessed hair of the Prophet Their belief was such that ill person, if he drinks the water which has been soaked by the blessed hair of the Prophet they will recover. This was their love, this was their belief, this was their faith. Then just imagine um, what their love would be for the Prophet himself. This is the blessed hair we're talking about, um, uh, Rizwan Bhai. The blessed perspiration, the blessed sweat. What can we say about that? Which is the best of the fragrances of this world and of the hereafter. Um, the best of the fragrances, even that cannot match the fragrance of the blessed um, as, uh, perspiration of the Prophet It is stated, uh, Sayyidina Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala, he narrates this to the Prophet Once a person, he came in the court of the Prophet and he said that I've married my daughter and I want to send her to her husband's house. But I do not have any fragrance. Please grant me something. Now the Prophet he said that I do not possess this, I do not have, uh, have it myself. Tomorrow, tomorrow morning, come back with a wide uh, bottle, with a bottle which has a wide opening and bring any, um, uh, any branch, any piece of wood from any tree as well. So um, the next day, the person he came with, with, the, with the bottle and with a piece of wood. Now the Prophet ﷺ, what he did was, that he started to pour his blessed uh, perspiration, his blessed sweat from his arms into that bottle uh, to the extent that it filled up. And the Prophet والسلام, he gave that bottle um, to him and he said that give this to your daughter and tell her that use this stick, put this Hello. in this bottle, in the sweat and use this as fragrance. So it is stated that when 
um, he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when, when, she would, uh, when she would apply that fragrance, the blessed perspiration of the Holy Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, then her fragrance would reach everyone in Madinatul Munawwara. And her house became famous as Baitul Mutibin, meaning the house of fragrant people. And many generations this continued. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. So this is the love of the Prophet ﷺ that the Sahaba had. They honor how they would honor the Prophet ﷺ, how they would revere him, how they would, you know, uh, how they expressed their love by uh, respecting his blessed hair, by respecting his blessed um, saliva, by respecting his blessed perspiration, let alone the Prophet ﷺ himself. Akbar, uh, this reminds me an account of a king. Uh, he uh, would not take the name of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam without wudu. Allah. See, even if someone, someone else had the same name of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, if he wanted to call him by, by the name of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, because it would remind him Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam somehow. But out of love and respect and reverence, Allahu Akbar, he would not, if he was not in the state of wudu, he would use other name of that person. And he would not say the name of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. This was the love of our pious predecessors. And respect views of Madani Channel, time does not permit us. We can carry on and on and on, waqiyat and accounts of our pious predecessors, how they showed love of Mustafa alayhi salatu wa salam through their character, through their seerah, you know, through their, uh, subhanallah, uh, ways and gestures. We have got one uh, more segment in our program that is chosen Wazaif. We'll include that first. We'll come back inshallah to this topic. Sallu ala al-Habib, sallallahu ta'ala, ala Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ya Mustafa, the chosen one, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ya Mustafa, the chosen one. Respective viewers, the first wazifa we've got is Ya Azizu. Ya Azizu. Invoke this 41 times before going to meet a ruler or an officer, etc. That ruler or officer will be compassionate, insha'Allah. And the second wazifa we've got is Ya Mutakabbiru. Ya Mutakabbiru. Invoke this 21 times every day, one who suffers from frightful nightmares will no longer suffer them by virtue of this invocation, insha'Allah azzawajal. And duration of remedy is until cured. Respecting viewers of Madani Channel, today we are talking about love of Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Just a few minutes left, uh, the message I would like to give across is, what is the prerequisite of loving Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam? Lahad mein ishke rukhe shah ka daag leke chale Adheri raat suni thi charaag leke chale We had heard that the night of grave is very dark So we thought we could take some sort of lamp with us So we took the blessed uh, sunnah of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam with us. The sunnah of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam here referred as uh, the blessed beard and this as a lamp with us into our graves. Metaphorically we took the blessed seerah, blessed sunnah of Rasul, ittiba of Rasul, following of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with us into our grave as a lamp and that turned our dark grave into a beautiful subhanallah enlightened grave. So this is the message I wanted to give across that we should love Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and to prove that love is follow Rasul alayhi salatu wa salam. What is the final message from you Wasim Abbas Bhai? Please. SubhanAllah. We should strive immensely to see how much love of the Prophet alayhi salatu wa have we got and um, we should ensure that we don't lie to ourselves because sure. we ourselves will be at loss. Don't lie to yourself. Um, and we should all judge ourselves in the light of certain signs which ulama have mentioned regarding the prerequisites of loving the Prophet والسلام, and always try to improve your character. Always try to improve your character. Look at those signs and any signs that you are missing, which includes reciting salawat upon the Prophet, which includes talking over the Prophet's uh, Prophet, which includes uh, uh, obeying the Prophet, which includes um, uh, abandoning sins, etc., etc., etc. 
judge yourself, judge your character upon these prerequisites of loving the Prophet ﷺ. Don't lie to yourself, don't be self-complacent and keep improving yourself to attain higher rank in the light of loving the Prophet ﷺ. MashaAllah, beautiful message. And another important thing I would like to pick from Wasim Abbas by his point, what he mentioned, Salat upon Nabi alayhi salatu was salam. Yes, respective views of Madani Shail. If you want to increase love of Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, then do dhikr of Mustafa. Mention Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Whenever the blessed name of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam comes, put your hand onto your heart and humble yourself and remember subhanallah whose dhikr is being mentioned. These are the gestures, these are the ways, subhanallah, various forms that you can, and you can recite salat upon Nabi alayhi salatu wa salam. Respect views of Madan Shail. Insha'Allah this love will keep on increasing and a day will come when we will meet our beloved Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam insha'Allah azza wa jal with iman insha'Allah that's all for today we'll be back with another episode until then assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh ya mustafa the chosen one sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ya mustafa the chosen one sallallahu alayhi wa sallam